Howdy. This is a very large, long sketchbook, and so the video is very long. So I just want to thank you in advance for watching all of it. I did a little poll on my social media asking what I should do for my next video, and y'all wanted a sketchbook for this, a big anatomy sketchbook. I just finished it a few days ago. It lasted me uh, almost, what is that, one, two, three, seven months, which is way more than my usual sketchbooks last. Usually my sketchbooks are like a month, two months, but they're like little small guys. This is like four sketchbooks in one, and it's 100 pages, and they're only like $22. So if you can find one of these Strathmore Sketch uh, 18 by 24, they're awesome, they're huge. Um, the paper is not amazing, but it's not bad either. There's not, I, I haven't really been drawing on the back side like I usually do because it's a little bit of bleed. But for stuff like this, I totally could have been. So it's kind of like 200 sheets, depending on the medium you use. If you're using pencil, probably be okay. So yeah, I got this primarily to use for my uh, anatomy figure drawing studies. I like being able to see my previous drawings and iterations and notes all in the same place. Um, makes my life a lot easier. And then also a lot of these sheets I would pull out afterwards and put on the wall in my drawing area to reference. Yeah, my one complaint about the sketchbook is that the papers don't like to stay attached very well, which is nice when you want to put stuff on the wall, but there's a hundred sheets, so I don't need stuff. I don't have enough space for a hundred sheets on my wall, so that's one downside. But it's nice. It's got a cardboard backing too, so you can like bring it to a figure drawing session. Um, this page is not actually from this sketchbook, but it's uh, relevant. I started this class on this paper. After this day, I was like, nope. No more of that. I don't want to. I don't want to use that paper. So, just I put that in there because it's relevant. Uh, so the class I took was called uh, Figure Drawing Rhythm and Structure with Christian Nicorda on Brainstorm School online. Um, these I think came a little bit later, so I'm just gonna put them aside for a moment. Uh, but basically, the class is uh, a very good intro anatomy figure drawing class. It teaches you so much and gives you such a good foundation. It's two months long. Uh, Christian was a great teacher. I really liked the subject matter. So I got this book to kind of fill with homework and notes. And then after that, I kind of carried through and I did a lot of figure drawing in here. I've been working out of uh, Michael Hampton's design and invention book, very similar subject matter and structure, and just copying a lot of the drawings. And then I've also been bringing it to life drawing and drawing in it. And there's a couple of other like non anatomy related drawings in here, but that's okay. Some of the first things we did were um, gesture and just quick straight versus curve, how to approach gesture drawing. Here's a good order of operations when you attack it. And this is honestly like one of the most important things I learned in the class is just how to start. So these notes were really helpful. And the first week of homework was 200 gesture drawings. So I started with that in the book. I'm not sure where one through 30 went. Maybe they're in here somewhere but they were probably garbage anyways. And these are all uh, between a minute and a minute and a half in length. So the goal was to get my speed up. And I've found that I haven't done like really fast time figure drawing like this in a while, at least not like a bunch at once. The figure drawing group I go to does like five one minute poses. So it's not really enough to really get, get the gears turning. Uh, by the end of these 200 in the first week, I was way more comfortable with just quick gesture drawing. And I like a lot of the simplifications here. I find that in some of my uh, current quick gesture drawings, there's just like too much structure that I'm working on. Whereas you can say a lot with less if you get good at it. So um, some of these pages are just not in the book in the right order. So I'm just going to throw them aside. But yeah, a lot of these are just found from like online uh, resources like Line of Action or like Croaky Cafe, or like some free reference packs I found. I think one of the things I improved at most was just general proportion of things. Uh, after you do like 50 of these, you really start to nail where everything goes. Like how far down should the hips be? How long should the legs be? And if you do these all week long, I think I ended up doing so it was seven days, I had to do 200. So I did like 30 a day. That was my goal every day for a week, and that helped a lot.
it only took about like 45 minutes, you know, to get the get the site and the you know, skip any terrible poses. Because some of those sites have some goofy stuff on them for sure. But what I do like about drawing from the pictures as opposed to a live model is you can find stuff like this where they, you know, took a frame out of a video or like snapped the photo right at the the center of the movement. So like in addition to me trying to capture the movement, there also is so much movement just in the reference. It's hard not to get it. People jumping and, you know, leaning and running. So there's some cool foreshortening in some of these. That one especially is like a fun uh, up angle. Yeah, this book is so big I can hardly fit it in the frame. Careful about that. It's a lot of heats in here. I also um, was kind of switching tools. I try to like approach subjects with as many different angles as possible to kind of like create more connections to the information in my mind. So I've got a brush pen here, uh, fountain pens, fine liners, uh, rubber nib markers, like Tombos. Um, there's a pencil in here at the end. Drawing in uh, ink already makes you have to be a little bit more confident and committed, which I think is good for these gestures because you don't want to stop to erase ever. So I just kind of went in hard with with pen. This one's nice. I like the um, simplification of the, the legs. This is what I'm talking about nowadays. I keep like trying to draw the whole leg and draw like more anatomy, but this kind of tells the story. Pencil, 75% of the way through these guys. Um, another interesting foreshortening. Uh, here's here's a monkey. A marmoset of some sort. Just, uh, don't worry about that. Uh, here's a design I was working on for a design class. Got some more. The laying down poses used to scare me a lot more, but they don't really after doing all these. Just like nothing to it but to do it kind of mentality. Really helps. Just especially having the structure that was presented in like the notes that I showed. You can pretty much attack any figure with that same structure and end up with a good result. So but my papers keep getting stuck on my bookshelf and not laying flat. And I think there's one more page, and then that's it. First week of this class. There's a lot of drawing. This is like, what, like, I don't know, 20 pages that I just showed, maybe a little bit less. Like, I had to put all of those together into a uh, homework document. And, like, oh, man. I cared a lot less about how good it looked in later, later homework assignments because it just took so long in that first one to put it together. It's about, like, two hours. Um, so then the next week, we basically... Did everything we did before, like drew, drew a gesture, and then tried to build the structure. But essentially, we're just putting in like placeholders for the bones, two boxes for the pelvis and the torso, the rib cage rather, and then the uh, collarbone, sternum, thoracic arch, anterior superior iliac spines, and then on the backside, sacrum, spine. Uh, posterior superior iliac spines and the scapula those are like the major landmarks and then also the s curve and the c curve so we just had to do 30 of those um and then you may see some of these in here where the muscles are built on top i basically went over these later and did that so if you see that that's why so there's a bunch of these um i felt way more confident just about like drawing anatomy in general after just two weeks um or actually this is the second week so everything just felt a lot simpler and there are a lot of these that I've already done the muscles over. That was a later assignment. So I just went back and did it over the same drawing to save time and to like kind of re-study the same material. The thing that I don't like about these is I'm pulling all of the muscles to the outside edge of the body, but there's actually a lot more fat. Like on this this person, I basically just beefed up everything, but there's a lot more fat involved on this uh, figure. So that's a hard thing to study. I haven't really gotten to yet to show the difference between those two but i mean the first step is just not making the muscles go to the edge of the, the figure there's a lot of these and 
this is honestly like if I'm having trouble figuring out a figure from imagination, this is kind of the stage that I take it to. And once I get it here, I can put anatomy on it a lot easier from imagination now. And then week three, we kind of took a break from those and we went to head drawing. I think we had five minutes to draw a portrait here. And then at the end, we, um, this is like the lecture notes. And then we tried to draw it again at the end. I don't know where that drawing went, but <laughs> it looked way better. The idea was basically like, now you have the structure to do it. So we had to do 30 of these head constructions. Um, there's kind of a order of operations for this as well, an order to do it. I need to put this on the wall because whenever I struggle with portraits, this usually solves it. What I found about this is it makes it super easy to get likeness, which is fun because everyone's skull is pretty similar. And then from the likeness, you can just adjust it a little bit. Like maybe they're, you know, the top of their skull goes out a little bit farther or they have a wider chin. So we had to do 30 of these head structures and um, weird, creepy things with no eyebrows, which is kind of funny. That is Christian Nakorda. I just uh, drew him without eyebrows for the memes, which was appreciated. And what I love about these drawings is that they actually look like, even though they're just these like skull build outs, they actually look like the person I was drawing. Um, like I can remember the reference image just by looking at the skull drawing, which is really cool. Um, so this is Mads Mikkelsen. And like something about the eyes and the nose like just brings me <laughs> to that image that I'm thinking of, which is really cool. So here's like Stan Lee. Here's some Squid Game people. And these I took a little bit farther. Um, but there's uh, 001, old guy from Squid Game. Um, I forgot his name in the show, but 001. Saibyak, Ali, Gihun. And I've never really been able to just like quickly put in stuff like this. But after building this skull, like these took me like 10 minutes or less. So after building this like skull construction, putting the features on was super easy. I was like amazed at how easy the likeness was after I learned this method. So... Pretty cool. And what was really cool is by the end of this week, I was able to um, do it from imagination and make faces from imagination that were pretty decent. So it's more Star Wars people. Old Obi-Wan, um, Han Solo, we've got Luke, Mace Windu, Leia, Qui-Gon. Probably didn't need to say all that because it says right there. And some more. I think for studying this, Grand Moff Tarkin is a really good um, choice because he has these crazy cheekbones and like the mandible is like super visible very bony gaunt person and then i think these are that's from imagination yeah and then that is also from imagination didn't go so well so i tried it again down here that one worked better <laughs> and then and some landos and then the next week we came and did chest muscles and back muscles. That was our first um, muscle group that we did. And then we had to do basically 30 of these diagrams on different models. And the repetition was super necessary. This was on my wall as well. Maybe kind of take some new notes now that I'm better at it. So um, you already saw a lot of those muscle build outs in the previous drawings, um, but there's a couple here. This one, uh, each week we got assigned a new muscle group. So I came back and added it to the previous drawing. Um, so here is basically the whole figure with all the muscle groups I drew. And it's actually the same model in four different poses that I found on YouTube. I think it's from like lifedrawingparty.com is what it's called. I could be wrong. Um, but awesome models there that it's a video. So it's a lot more interesting to draw. And I really like how these came out. And so after the, the torso, we did the legs or the thigh rather. And then we went down to the legs. I think those notes are in here somewhere. Then we did the arms. And then I think we had a week on uh, forearm and hands and feet as well. That was the end. And all of these have kind of like an order of operations that you can go in to layer all the muscles on top of each other in the correct order. Um, and all the insertion and origin points and everything were taught as well. So I feel like I had a really... Like I've taken, I've taken another anatomy class before this that was not good. I basically did one hyper realistic diagram each week of each of these muscle groups, just one, but it had to look super nice. 
and I got critiqued more on like how good it looked rather than the actual accuracy of the muscles. It was like I was like trying to like make anatomy diagrams rather than like learn how to draw them quickly and from memory. <laughs> um, whereas this class made me do it 30 times and it could be a little looser. Um, and I learned way more in this class. So I guess the moral of the story is don't do it just once and don't give CGMA any money. My recording just cut off randomly and I talked to myself for like five minutes, but uh, it's okay. I'll just turn this page here. Um, I don't know if I already said this or even looked at this page to be honest, but here we are. Just filling out more of these whole body. Again, like I probably could have gotten more mileage if I redrew 30 figures from the start each week. But what I did is just to save time, and I was in another class too, is I would just go back over the previous drawings and fill out the next group of muscles when we got to it. And then if I felt like I needed more, I would just do extra mileage that week to understand it. So like forearms and like, I think upper legs, I was feeling pretty rough about. So I did those a little bit extra. Here's my feet notes. Oh, footnotes, hey. Uh, here's a terrible, terrible drawing of some Star Wars stuff. I was trying to just go straight to ink. I was looking at Andrew Paul Malcolm. Just ignore that. Oh, here's another one. Uh, this one's not supposed to be good over here, though. So just, just kind of ignore the whole thing, actually. It's kind of cursed. Arm studies and chest studies. Here's the feet. I think I'm going to put this on the because it's actually some good drawings. These are MMA fighters. They have a uh, super lean defined muscle so you can see the definition really well. And I was struggling with the armpit because you have the coracoid process and all this different muscles overlapping in here. It's really tricky and you don't actually see it that often. So the MMA fighters are always flexing and making these weird poses. So a good place to go to learn about it. And then I started doing this process once the class was over uh, to keep developing the skill. Um, I wanted to kind of do an iterative process from one reference. So I did like a gesture and then more of a rendered pencil drawing that was a little bit more um, like lifelike, realistic than a muscle breakdown and then kind of more stylized. How would I draw this if I was just like drawing, you know, a commission or in a comic book or something. Um, so I did a couple of those, but I didn't, I need to do more. I only did a few and then I got busy and started doing life drawing. But when I do go to life drawing, I try to do at least a couple iterations in each pose if I have time. So if it's like a 20 minute pose, I'll do like a five minute, like breakdown thumbnail, do some construction lines. And then use the remaining 15 minutes to do like a more finished thing. All right, so now these are a lot of these drawings are copied out of um, Michael Hampton's Design and Invention book. His figures are really cool. I like the way he shows the form. Some of those from the beginning of the book, and then some of his breakdowns on the stick figures and like where to support the weight. There's a whole bunch of. Uh, these are kind of like two minute gestures, I feel like, using just colored pencil. That's a Yabusama archer. I don't know what he's doing in there. Got bored, I guess, drawing people without clothes on. Uh, every now and then there's just like a random like drawing in here that's not related to anatomy at all. I think it's just because I like did my anatomy stuff and then like had to work on something else. So just use this as like my thumbnail launch pad. Some more imaginative stuff. Some of this might be from Michael Hampton's book. What I found is a good good way to study his drawings and any anatomy book really is like, if the drawing's incomplete, like say it doesn't have the, the lower leg here, like draw what you see in the book and then try to like finish it in the same style or the way they would draw it. And it's a good way to kind of like internalize all this other stuff in here, but also put it to use. So I, a lot of these drawings, like, I don't know how much was actually there that I copied and how much was added on by me at the end. Here's some character designs. Again, I like having all of the drawings right next to each other when I'm working on a, like, iterative thing. Uh, 
this was kind of an initial sketch. I had a couple. I was drawing Jesus, but not white Jesus, and also laughing. So I found a couple different like references, models, actors, photos to base it off of and kind of just merge them together. I think that's the original laughing Christ photo that this commission was inspired by. And I copied that and then tried to make him look like more Jewish, more Middle Eastern. Back to the Michael Hammond stuff, you can always tell when it's based on his drawings because it's like so heavily constructed and there's like wrapping lines around everything that looks very like, <laughs> especially his look very, very structural. Easy to grasp. More fun figures. That might be from Imagination. Which, that looks way better than some of the earlier Imagination sketches in this book. Something's working. Uh, I've kind of been trying to draw like this at Life Drawing with lots of hatch marks. It's been fun. These are really fun. I think the, the focus of these is on... Um, like the line of action and pulling the two forms apart, getting like good twists and curves and making the figures more interesting than they might be in real life. The iterative thing again, very useful. Got three here. And then I think I went muscle by muscle. These next pages, because I got Hector Alice page. Um, oh, this was fun. So this is, a uh, found a bunch of references of people swimming and then kind of just put them all on the same page, swimming in a big circle. And this was kind of like, Hey, I know how to do figure drawing now to like a finished polished state. So this was like a nice little milestone for me after doing all that, all those other pages I just showed you being able to sit down and do this felt really good. It took like two hours, maybe three hours. Trapezius studies, super buff trapezius studies. These might be from Imagination too. I can't be sure. These I was trying to do during a movie, didn't work. But these I think are from Imagination. It's ab time. Here's some abs. The external obliques. I like thinking of it as like a little house. I think that's in the Michael Hampton book. Like just some pillars holding up a little house on top. I think he has an area in the book that's all about the comparison between architecture and anatomy, which is pretty cool. Design them similarly, and they're inspired by one another. Well, an architecture isn't architecture is inspired by anatomy, not the other way around. <laughs> I always surprise myself when I see pencil drawings because I don't like to draw in pencil very often. Um, so sometimes I'm flipping through my sketchbooks and I'm like, did I draw that? That's kind of nice. Why don't I do that more? Uh, that's a model from Pinterest. I've seen him many times, so then I drew him. But this was, uh, I think someone asked me, like, what's the order of operations for the figure drawing? And so I was like, okay, let me see if I can remember from my notes. And this is probably three or four months after I took those initial notes, so I'm glad I still remembered. A lot of drawings of uh, bowlers in here that same bowling comic just getting comfortable with some poses and whatnot i found a whole blog of bowling history that is updated like once or twice daily which is just hilarious to me but it's got lots of great photo references from throughout history serratus little avocado slices more bowlers I think I bought like a, a reference pack. Or no, this is from uh, Love Life Drawing. It has a new website where they upload weekly a new set of photos from a model. More sketches. Oh, these are from actual, this is now Life Drawing class. My first time going to Life Drawing class, or second time maybe. I brought this big sketch pad because I, I never want to like go in there with the giant sketch pad. Like I want to see what it's like, you know, before I went. So once I saw that there was room for me to bring a giant sketch pad, I did. So this is probably second time going, and second time ever going to life drawing too. So it's really fun. And this is the amount of time it, you know, it took five minutes, ten minutes. 
switching mediums a lot. I need to bring these pastels next time I go. I think, yeah, so here I did like a thumbnail and then a more finalized version where I correct my mistakes from the thumbnail. And this one turned out pretty well. This was, um, might have been the 30 minute. I could be wrong. Could be another 20. I didn't write it down, but yeah, started with a thumbnail and then, um, attacked it. We got like two different colors going on here. Started with the blue contour and then darkened it with the green. Use green for like, or blue for some construction as well. Which is pretty good, like having the like color color change between the construction and the final. It feels different than doing like the value change of pencil to ink or something like that. It just lets you separate a little bit more, but it also gives the final image a cool vibe. I'm hoping that uh YouTube doesn't shut me down for this. I feel like it won't, because I've seen actual nude models on Instagram for life drawing or on YouTube. You should be okay. These are more Michael Hampton drawings. Got some arm. This one I actually built out a lot on my own. Um, I think the initial drawing was a lot more like this. And so I pushed it a little bit farther and put it in the, you know, cast shadow, form shadow, some more definition to all the muscles in the side and the forearm wasn't even on there. Put all that in. Um, here's two weeks ago at life drawing. Five minutes. I don't know where the one minutes went. Maybe they're in a different book, but two fives, ten. I think this, I put this anatomy overlay on it at the very end. I was so bored that day for some reason. I just could not focus. And so I, and also I think I was just like, the model was just kind of like sitting for a lot of the poses, which is fine, but I just got bored of drawing it. So I like gave up on the last one. I just came back and did this. Here it is 15 minutes, and another 10 minute. Drawing different techniques, toning first and then removing with the eraser. Here is the 20 minute. That maybe is 20 as well. And that's the end of the book. So yeah, I've learned a lot. I think my next steps are taking a like actual figure drawing class that is not about all the anatomy, but more about like just getting a good final image and rendering the forms and you know using charcoal which i don't care too much about because the art that i want to make is not with charcoal but i know it's a good rendering tool so i'll probably approach something like that i know there's some good classes on uh brainstorm actually taught by the guy that wrote that book michael hampton so i might try to take something like that for now i'm just going to keep on Keep on going to life drawing and keep learning about anatomy. I'm about 75% of the way through this book, copying the drawing and taking notes. So once I finish that, I'll maybe attack like something that's a little bit more gestural, like the force books or Morpho. Way down the line, I wanted like to tackle Bridgman again because like I feel like you shouldn't try to tackle Bridgman until you've done a lot of stuff like this because it's kind of like here's all these intense anatomy pieces. How can we simplify them? But you should learn how they actually look first. That's my book. Thanks for watching.